Shabbat Shalom. It's Ruben Abramov, the Haftorah man. This week's Haftarah is for Parsha Vayera. And in it, we have this fantastic story in the Haftarah about two women. Yes, it's a double feature this week. Who is the prophet this week? Elisha, the student of none other than the great Eliyahu Hanavi, the successor to Eliyahu Hanavi. And just a little small bit that Elisha was watching Eliyahu as he ascended up to heaven. He didn't die, but he ascended up to heaven. And the, he felt so close to Eliyahu and Avi. He said, Avi, Avi, Rechev Yisrael. He wasn't his father, but he referred to him as, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. In other words, Eliyahu and Avi carried Israel. He was zealous about his Amuna and in Bitochon, in the Rabona Shalolam. He believed in God and he was passionate about it. And that he told Elisha, just remember this, I may be ascending, but this is the most important thing. If you bind your soul to my soul, then you are never going to be alone. And the power that you asked for, double my blessing, that's what Elisha asked from Eliyahu, if you connect yourself to me, and we're so intertwined that we're inseparable, you will have that power that you were seeking. So let's see here this fantastic story about Elisha. It starts off from the book of Melachim. And in Melachim, you have these wonderful stories about Eliyahu Hanavi. Yes, in the book of Kings. And it kicks off from chapter 4, Perek Dalid. V'isha achas minashei b'nei hanavim. B'nei hanavim, what's that? The sons of the prophets. Well, guess what? Today you go to medical school or you go to law school. Back then, that schools to learn how to be a prophet. You'd sit there and he'd have a master and he would teach you how to meditate, how to get into a trance and how to have this spiritual connection to God. And this woman is a widow. What widow? Well, we know her husband from the Midrashim was none other than Ovadja, and that he had passed away, leaving her with tremendous amount of debt. So she's saying, my husband gave his life and all our money to keep these hundred prophets learning, the last hundred prophets in the land of Israel learning Torah. He dies, my husband dies, and now the king's son wants to take my two children away from me. Whoa! That's not justice. So she tells Elisha, what are you going to do? You're a man of God? <laughs> I need uh, some money to help me pay out this loan my husband took. So, Elisha comes to her, and she says, my husband's dead, what are you going to do? So, Elisha looks at her. She goes nameless, and he says, listen, what do you have in this house of yours that's worth anything? Let's start with something. She says, are you kidding? I'm busted, I'm broke, I'm in debt. You see uh, okay, look over there. There's a little jar, and in the jar there's one drop of oil. He goes, bring it to me. So she does. Why? Because the blessing, the miracles, only God could make something happen from nothing. A prophet, a navi, was able to take something, even one drop, and increase it. That's why we leave challah on the table on Shabbos. We never tell God, Hey God, you got, I got nothing, give me something. You always say, you know something, I have a little bit, can you increase on it? Can you give me more? At least acknowledge, even if your situation is not good, that it could be worse, and that you always have something. We're the people of hope. Back to the main line of the story. He then tells, Elisha then tells the woman, find any pan, any bottle, any jug, anything that's a vessel, and bring it into your house from all your neighbors, bring it. They're like, hey, what are they going to ask me? What do I need it for? He goes, that's not the point. Bring me all of them. He brings them. The house is filled with all these vessels. He says, close the door. I don't want anybody to see what happens here. Why? A miracle happens. She lifts up the juglet, and the one drop pours out, but then a second drop and then it goes from drops to a stream, and stream to pouring. And she's filling up each barrel to the last one gets filled up with oil. Oh, she's like OPEC. She's got more oil than anybody now. Now, what happens is, she don't have money problems. And he tells her, go pay off the king so that your children will be safe. 
And this is the miracle story, first, of the double feature. Second story is the famous story about the Shunamid woman. Elisha was a traveling prophet, and that he would stop by this Shunamid's woman's house. She was married. And it says that they built in their at- attic. Where do you think the word attic comes from? Atik, old. You put your old stuff up in the attic. Atik, atikot, antiquities. Yes, another Hebrew origin of an English word. And now the man, every time he would come, Elisha would come to the city of Shunem. She said, you need a place to stay. We're going to build you a room in my attic. And they put a table and a chair and a lamp and a bed for them, for this man. And it said that he would come. So also in those days, holy men or very successful people, they had assistants to look after them and walk the donkey in front of them, whatever the story may be. So she says to Gehazi, his assistant, listen, this man comes, you come all the time to my home. You know, sorry, Gehazi is saying this to Elisha. And he's saying, listen, we come to this lady's house. We've got to give her something. Find out what she needs. So she says, thank God I'm covered. I have everything. But Gehazi notices she doesn't have children. So Elisha blesses her and says, this time next year you will have a son. She goes, please, don't give and take by me. You don't tell me I'm going to have something and take it away. He says, no, 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 you will have a son this time next year. Sure enough, she gives birth. And the story goes on that a couple of years later, it's a hot summer day in the Middle East, and the son is out in the field, they're harvesting, whatever the story may be, working the fields, and the kid perishes. He gets heat stroke. He passes out. The kid is brought back into the house by the mother. The mother is looking at the kid and saying, Oi, Alicia, what happened? I told you don't give me and take. The kid's dying. What did you do? So she sends her, she sends her messenger, and Elisha hears about this and sends his messenger to revive the kid. Doesn't work. She goes back, and then she goes to Elisha personally and says, listen, you promised me. Now you show up. That trick didn't work. You got to fix this mess. Elisha comes back, climbs up the stairs. The son is in Elisha's room, dead. This is one of the three times we have Tchiyad HaMetim in the Tanakh. This is one of the three times that you have resurrection of the dead in the Torah. What does Elisha do? Well, it sounds like he does mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. That the kid is lying flat on the bed, puts hand on hand, eyes on eyes, mouth on mouth, and he breathes into the child again. And he says a Kabbalistic prayer to revive the dead. And sure enough, this child is revived. Elisha calls the mother back up into the room, and she sees that her son is living. And he looks at her, and she looks at him, and he says to her, your son is alive, as I promised you. He will stay alive. So this is the fantastic story of Parshas Va'era Haftarah. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy the double feature.